starting. Good evening, everyone. This is Joy Chapel live stream. It's uh, good to be talking to you. We can't see you, but uh, and we must be together at Trinity. But we're doing this instead, and hopefully, we'll be able to uh, get through to you some of the blessings that come from God's word. And so, we're going to pray. Dear Father in heaven, we give you thanks for this beautiful day that you have made. And thank you, Lord, for this evening where we can gather and uh, join to sing praises to your name and to read your word together. And I pray, Lord, that as we uh, sing and pray and read, that your word will be a blessing to all that hear. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Courtney, and it's wonderful to be here again on this uh, little bit of a cloudy day, but it's nice to be here. And so we're going to sing a, a new song today, but that will be our second song. The first song will be Alive, Alive Forevermore. And so our Jesus, our God, He is alive. And then the second one we will sing, We Will Glorify. And I will uh, go over it with you guys because it's a new song for Joy Chapel. sing the uh, second verse and it's instead of singing we will glorify we will sing hallelujah so we will glorify the king of kings so then we will uh, the second verse we will say hallelujah to the king of kings and so we need to remember that when we sing Bye. 
you know, yes, uh, Allison was telling me, this song doesn't say Jesus. But who is the King of Kings? Jesus. And who is the Lord of Lords? Jesus. And who is the great I Am? Both God and Jesus. And so now we'll have our memory verse, I believe. Yes, and another name, another name for Jesus is the Lamb, because he was the oh, Lamb. The Listen lamb to right? Yes, and then here, in these words, we had this last week. Uh, he is saying these words that he is the light. And we're just going to review that, because if we say the verses over and over, maybe we'll remember them. So Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. That is such a bright verse, isn't it? Amen. Full of light. Let's say it again. Maybe you could say it where you're sitting, watching. Okay, these are Jesus' words. He said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. John 8, 12. Now, I wonder if we could try saying that without the words. Let's see if we can do that. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8, 12. Okay. Last week we were talking about Jesus saying, I am the light of the world. And we have been talking about time that Jesus used the word I am. I am the bread of life, he said. And then he said, I am the light of the world. Well, tonight we're going to look at the part where Jesus said, I am. And so um, maybe some of you have wondered, what is God like? And could it be that we could ever see God? Because the scripture said that God dwells in a light to which no man can approach. And when Moses wanted to see him, God said, you can't see my face and live. And, oh my. So, uh, where does that leave us? But then years later, Isaiah had the same question, the same longing. And he cried out to God, as we read Isaiah chapter 64, verse 1. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. So Isaiah had that prayer. And you know what? That 700 years later, that prayer was answered. Just when the time was right, Jesus can be born. That's the Christmas story. And it says in John 1, 14, and the word became a human being and made it home among us. And so, if we really want to see Jesus, then read the New Testament, read the Gospels, and then you'll get a good idea of what God is really like. So I want to read to you that episode from John chapter 8, starting at verse 31 and going to verse 59. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But we are the, we are the descendants of Abraham, they said. We have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean you will be set free? They forget that their ancestors were slaves long ago in Egypt, and then after that they were slaves in first Babylon and then in, in, in Persia, and so they had forgot their history. But Jesus didn't mean that. Jesus replied, I'll just tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. A slave is not a permanent member of the family, but a son is part of the family forever. So if the son sets you free, you are truly free. Yes, I realize that you are the descendants of Abraham, and yet some of you are trying to kill me. 
because I told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham never did such a thing. No, you are imitating your real father. They replied, we aren't, the, we aren't illegitimate children. God himself is our true father. So they were insinuating that Jesus was illegitimate because Joseph wasn't his real father. His father was really God. But now they're saying, God himself is our father. And uh, so Jesus told them, if God were your father, you would love me because I have come to you from God. I am here, I am not here on my own, but he sent me. Why can't you understand what I am saying? It's because you can't even hear me. You are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character, for he is a liar from, and the father, father of lies. So when I tell you the truth, you just naturally don't believe me. Which of you can truthfully accuse me of sin? And since I am telling you the truth of my father, and you dishonor me, oh, okay, I'll read that again. That wasn't quite the way it was. For I honor the Father, and you dishonor me. And though I have no wish to glorify myself, God is going to glorify me. He is the true judge. I tell you the truth, anyone who obeys my teaching will never die. The people said, now we know you are possessed by a demon. Even Abraham and the prophet died. But you say, anyone who obeys my teaching will never die. Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died and he so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Jesus answered, if I want to glorify myself, if I want glory for myself, excuse me, it doesn't count. But it is my father who will glorify me. You say, he is our God, but you don't even know him. I know him. If I said otherwise, I would be a great liar, as great a liar as you were. But I do know him and obey him. Your father Abraham rejoiced as he looked forward to my coming. He saw it and was glad. The people said, you aren't even 50 years old yet. How can you have come from, sir, how can you have seen Abraham? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, before Abraham was even born, I am. At that point, they picked up stone to throw at him. But Jesus was hidden from them and left the temple. So uh, that is the little episode that we were going to tell you about. So if, uh, let me get my, my mind together here, <laughs> what I was going to say. So one day, everyone will see him. And we were, we were talking about will we ever see God, but how we get to see him. And it says in, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, that, look, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him. And so, but if we don't get to know him before he comes, it will be too late. And so, uh, we have got to be children of God first. If we have bitterness in our heart against what somebody has done to us, or what somebody has said to us, then the love of God is not in us. Am I, am I? <laughs> okay. Um, so, if you have any bitterness about what somebody has done to you, or said to you, then you need to repent of it, and you need to tell God you're sorry. And, and so, if you really want to be a child of God, here is what you do. Because uh, it says in John chapter 1, that oh, to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. And so, uh, we can be reborn, 
our faith in God and become his children. And so, if you haven't received him yet, then tonight is another chance to do so. All you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I believe that you died for my sins. Please forgive me and come and take over my life. And that is as, as easy as it could be. But it, it seems too simple to many people. But it's not. It's simple, but it's profound. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's the real truth that Jesus was talking about. And so God bless these words to your hearts. And I just, I just want to say we love you all. We pray for you. So let's pray again. Dear Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for Jesus, our Savior. Thank you for that one who has said, I am. And that is who you are, Lord. You are the great God of creation. Without you, nothing was made that was made. You, you are the Son of the Father. He spoke, and it was so. You are that word. You came to live among us. And you were glorified by our Heavenly Father as he raised you back from the dead. Thank you so much for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, it was really nice to connect with you all again. You know, we do all the connecting mostly on this side, but sometimes some of you message us or whatever, and, and I... Uh, one per, one of the uh, Joy Chapel guests uh, messaged us last night for a prayer request, so uh, I won't say the prayer request, but you know, we we need to uh, know what you guys are up to. So if you want, you can message us prayer request and uh, what you're doing um, and such, so uh, you know that we're praying for you and we miss you all and we look forward to seeing, connecting with you uh, next Thursday also. So the Lord bless you and keep you.